If you have your Bibles, I want to invite you, while the ladies continue to come down, if you want to go ahead and turn to Luke chapter number 10. And then a couple of things that I would like to do real quickly. We have a couple of prayer requests that are um, that I want to share with you today. Um, the sergeants have a two-month-old granddaughter named Lainey, and they live in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky, and she is now in the ICU unit there with some type of a infectious disease. And they've, they've asked us to remember Laney in prayer. So if you would, keep Laney Sargent in your prayers. We would greatly appreciate that. Then also, Kurt Grotoff has been taken into the hospital, um, has pneumonia. Um, and so we need to keep Kurt and, and Linda in our prayers as well. Then I want to take just a moment. We have a, a gentleman in our audience that received a, uh, an award this week. Brother Dan, would you stand up where, you're, where you are back there? Brother Dan Levin was uh, awarded the Award of Excellence in Law Enforcement Chaplaincy. I had to read that because I'd never remember it, uh, by the Fraternal Order of Police. And that's just an amazing job that Dan is doing. And I think we need to recognize him for the job that he's doing. That job would be very tough to deal with the circumstances and situations that he's come in, but God has blessed him and God is working through him and he's impacting a lot of different lives. Luke chapter number 10 this morning. We're going to begin in verse number 30 and follow, but I need to go back and kind of set the context, if you would. As Jesus was going about his personal ministry, in verse 25 we find there that a lawyer, and that's just another word for scribe, um, a teacher of the law, if you would. A scribe was someone who, who began by simply copying the law so that there would be extra uh, pages used that people could read. And then as they copied that law, they also began, became so familiar with the law that in time they began to interpret the law, and they became teachers of the law. And these are guys that knew, supposedly knew the law inside and out. Now, let me say this as we get into maybe help you understand where I'm going with this. When you, look at the, when you look at the scribes and the Pharisees and you look at Jesus, the scribes and Pharisees put their emphasis on the letter of the law. They wanted to cross that T and they wanted to dot that I. And as long as they abided by the letter of the law, they were content. But when Jesus came, he took it up a notch. It's not just about the letter of the law, folks. It's about the spirit of the law. And if that letter of the law does not motivate people to live in the Spirit and allow God to use them and work through them to touch this world for good, then we've failed miserably in what God really truly intended. And when this, when this scribe and this lawyer spoke to Jesus, and, and the Bible tells us that he was testing him or that he was tempting him, and that was to test him, to find out what his theology was. How is he going to approach this? I mean, Jesus did things a little different than the other religious leaders of the day. Would you agree with that? And so he's testing him to find out how he's going to respond. And he asked the question, uh, what, what do I have to do to have eternal life? And so Jesus turned it around on him and said, how do you, how do you read it? What do you see? And so he told him about, you know, uh, serving the Lord with all of his heart, mind, strength, and Jesus, and what he's really saying there, what Deuteronomy chapter number 6, verse number 5 is saying there, is that when we serve the Lord, God wants us to serve him with every area of our life and being. Okay? It's not about crossing a T and dotting an I. It's about yielding ourselves or allowing God to use us as vessels through which he can work to impact other people's lives. When he answered, Jesus made this comment, you've answered well. But the guy willing to justify himself asked another question, and that was, who is my neighbor? Because as he gave his answer, not only did he talk about loving God with everything we have, but also loving our neighbor as ourselves. Now, I don't want to stop there for just a moment and, let, and share with you the mindset of the nation of Israel. When, they talked, when, the, when the Jews talked about their neighbors, they were talking about people from their, from their nation, people that were committed to the same God. And if you happen to be a publican, if you happen to be a harlot, if you happen to be a Samaritan, then you were outside of their definition of what a neighbor was, and they felt only responsible to act 
friendly and kindly to people who thought like them, acted like them, and looked like them. And when he made that statement, who is my neighbor, Jesus is going to take this parable of the Good Samaritan and share who God intends for our neighbor to be. Let me just remind you that the God that we serve, he doesn't only send rain on the just, but he sends it on the unjust as well. God provides and blesses those uh, throughout the world. He loves everyone. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And his goal for you and I as his children is to not be caught up in stereotypes, but allow God to use us to minister and to, to impact the lives of those around about us. When Jesus tells this, this story, this parable here in verse number 30, he talks about a certain man that went down from Jerusalem. Now, let me clarify, he doesn't tell us whether the man was a Gentile, whether he was a Jew, whether he was a Samaritan. He simply says a man, but in the context of the passage, I think we're driven to the understanding that this was a fellow Jew or a native of Israel. This guy was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and the reason it talks about going down is because there was a decline of about 3,300 feet. When you left Jerusalem and went down to Jericho, the elevation dropped, and so it would be referred to as going down. The 17-mile road from Jerusalem to Jericho was a road that was filled with twists and turns and mountains and all these other things and plenty of places for thieves and robbers to hide so that they could rob those making that journey. As a matter of fact, it was very prevalent. It was considered to be a very dangerous trip from Jerusalem to Jericho. This man is going down, and evidently the way it looks here, or the way that I understand it, he must have been traveling by himself. And as he's journeying on this road, the thieves come out. And if you'll notice there in, in verse number 30 and 31, uh, it says that he fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. In other words, he fell on hard times. Okay? This guy is basically, basically in a position where he is helpless and he is in a need of others showing sympathy, mercy, and compassion on him. I want you to know as we go through lives, we're going to find ourselves in circumstances where, we, where it's beyond our control, where we find ourselves in difficult places longing for someone to share with us and encourage us and help us and maybe strengthen us at that particular time. This man was beaten, left half dead, stripped and robbed, and there he is lying on the ground. And then you notice in the next verse as it goes on, and by chance there came down a priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked upon him and passed by on the other side. Here's the reality. When you look at priests and Levites, priests were the ones that were, were from, the, from a, they were descendants of Aaron. These are the ones that offered the sacrifice. If anyone's heart should have shown compassion for a fellow Jew, it should have been a priest. The Levites were those that worked alongside the priest and did a lot of the manual labor. These two individuals were the ones, if anybody should have shown this man compassion, it should have been them. Here's the problem, and this is that Smithology that, that I'm talking about here. But here's the problem. Then they looked at this man, they looked at him, and they began to measure the written law and the letter of the law as opposed to the spirit of the law because the spirit of the law said show compassion reach out and help him but the letter of the law said if you came in contact with a dead person you became unclean and them being priests and Levites they didn't want to be ceremonially unclean here's what I'm telling you folks there are times in your life and in my life that we've got to get out of our comfort zone we're going to be around other people that are going through difficulties and hardships, and, and maybe we've never experienced that ourselves. And maybe we've never gone through, and we, maybe we can't truly relate to what they're going through. But I'm telling you this, when you look at, at Leviticus there, and it talks about that we need to love our neighbor as ourself, we need to get out of our comfort zone every once in a while, and we, be, we need to be willing to step out in faith and allow God to use us to become a blessing and a help and encouragement to those around about. This man's laying there. My guess is he didn't care if it was a priest. He didn't care if it was a Levite. He didn't care if it was a fellow Jew. He didn't care if it was a Samaritan. What he needed was somebody to show compassion on him, and he wasn't really picky and choosy at the time. Now, look, look at that next verse. 
not only did the, the priest pass by and not only did the Levite pass by, but it goes on and says a certain Samaritan. Now you remember who the Samaritans were. The Samaritans were those that from the northern tribe that when, when they went into bondage and they brought others from other nations in, they married, they intermarried with other people. And the, the true Jewish people there in Judah, when they looked at the Samaritans, they considered them to be half-breeds. And there was a great disgust one for another on both sides. They argued about a lot of different things. They argued about where to worship and these different things that Jesus, when he talked to the woman at the well, you remember, there was a, there was a, there was a great dislike between Jews and Samaritans. But here's what I'm telling you. When this Samaritan came that way, and by the way, to travel that road as a Samaritan put himself in great danger, but to travel that road and he came upon that man that was lying there half dead, he wasn't really concerned whether he was a Jew whether he was a Samaritan, whether he was strictly a Gentile. He saw a man who had a need and his heart went out to him. The Bible says that he had compassion on him. Let me tell you what he did. What he did was he saw that man and he responded to that man the way he would have wanted the man to respond to him had the roles been reversed. If I can somehow get it through my mind, if I can somehow get a hold of that truth, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, it'll make a difference in the way we minister to people, and it'll make a difference in the impact that we have in lives of people around about us. This man was there. He saw him. Uh, it talks about him being a, the, the Samaritan, and it said he had compassion on him. Notice he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. What that means is the oil there and the wine were used in medicinal ways. The, the wine would have been an antiseptic. It would have helped cleanse the wound, if you would. The oil would have brought soothing to the individual. And he took that man who was not able to walk and make a journey to town. He put him on his own beast, and he's the one that began to walk. But he took him back to the, to the, 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 the uh, place there, his, his room there. And notice it says, he bound up his wounds, put oil in uh, and wine, and set him on his beast, and brought him to the inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed... He took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest, more when I come again, I will repay thee. This is what he did. He knew that man was not going to be able to get up in the next day or two. So he, he paid forward so that that man had a place to stay. He encouraged the innkeeper to keep him until he came to health. And the next time he came through, if what he left was not enough, he would pay him, he would gladly pay him there as well. The bottom line was he responded to this man and, and, and loved this man, showed compassion on this man, and treated this man the way he would want to be treated. When Jesus was done with the story, he asked a simple question. Of these three men, who was the neighbor? And the religious leader found himself in a position he would not even mention the term Samaritan. He simply said, he who showed mercy. And Jesus' statement was, go ye and do likewise. And the message that Jesus is giving that religion, if we can't love our brethren, how can we truly love God? The truth of the matter is to love people the way that Jesus is teaching in this parable means that first and foremost we need to have a relationship with God because humanly speaking we're not going to be able to do it but as the Holy Spirit of God indwells us and works in us then we can share that love of God with people around about us. When he made the statement go and do likewise his message to the man was Forget the letter, I shouldn't say forget the letter of the law. It, the letter of the law is only going to, you're going to cross the T's and dot the I's. God wants you to show compassion and live in the spirit of the law. And let me just say this in closing, and that is, when Jesus Christ came to this earth, did he not come to touch and impact the life of every man and woman, boy and girl that was born in this world? When he hung there on the cross, when he gave up the ghost, when he cried out, it is finished, he did it so that people, whosoever will, could come and have faith, put faith in him and be born again and live. 
Folks, Jesus is wanting you and I to get rid of the stereotypes. He's, want us, he's wanting us to get rid of those things that we've, that, we've, that we've grown up with and that we've let change our lives. He wants us to realize that every individual has a soul. Every individual is going to spend eternity somewhere. Every individual is going to stand before God one day. And what that individual needs to have heard in this life is that God loves them and cares about them and that God can and will save them. The, the Lord's Supper that we're going to be observing was the sacrifice that was given so you and I could have forgiveness and so that others could come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ as well. Let me just ask this question. And I... No hands raised, and I want you to know this has, been a, this has been a tough week for me. Because as I was studying this message, it kept coming back to me. Are you the neighbor you need to be? Are you the person you need to be? Are you willing to step out of your comfort zone? Are you willing to go to that one that's laying there in the street and is going through difficulties and hardships? Are you willing to take a chance and, and look down and, 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 and show compassion on them and be willing to minister to them the way that we should? Here's what I'm telling you. The first commandment is to love the Lord with everything that we have. But commandment number two, Leviticus chapter number uh, 19, verse number 18. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto them as you would have them do unto you. And if I can get a hold of that, and if I can allow the Holy Spirit to grow me up and teach me what I need to know, my impact on the world will become much greater because God wants us to be vessels through which He can work, through which He can move to touch those around us. So the question is, what kind of neighbor am I? What kind of neighbor am I? I'm going to ask you to stand, if you would, please, with heads bowed.